How are we doing today, neighbors? Ian with eTrailer here, and today we're going to take a look at and then install the Dexter Torflex lift kit for number 9 through 12 axles. Let's go over a few features of this lift kit, and then we'll talk about the install. And one thing this is going to be really beneficial for is if you do have a lifted vehicle that's going to be towing your horse trailer. And part of the reason is horses are very sensitive to those angles and they're going to notice if you're sitting a little bit crooked and it's going to be a very uncomfortable ride for them causing unneeded stress during travel. In addition to making a more comfortable ride for your horses, this is also going to give you great ground clearance more than you're going to have with the factory. So you're going to be able to get in and out of those fields a lot easier without catching on something, uh, damaging the horse trailer itself. One thing to keep in mind is going to be that rear ramp where you're going to be loading up. With the lift kit, since we are going up three inches and one eighth inch, it is going to increase that angle of attack from the ramp. So that may be something that your horses are not familiar with and you definitely want to work with them to make sure they get comfortable with that ramp. The kit we're going to be installing here today is intended for Torflex axles, so make sure you pay attention when you're doing your order. Uh, we are going to be installing the Tandem Axle Kit. There is options for other kits, so make sure, again, when you're placing your order that you do look through specifically how your axles are mounted to the frame. One thing to keep in mind as we get into the install here is we are going to have to have the horse trailer up off the ground completely so that way we can allow the axles to free hang to be able to insert the spacers between the frame. This is not something I would suggest doing in your driveway unless you've got a really nice jack set that's going to be able to hold everything up and keep everything safe for you. But I'm going to walk you through the entire process of getting these spacers installed and if you do happen to watch the video and think to yourself, I don't want to try to tackle this, please check out our dealer locator on the website. We'd be happy to help find a trained professional in your area that can get these installed for you. But for all those DIYers, let's go ahead and hop through it and I'll get you taken care of. To begin, we are going to have the entire vehicle off the ground, allowing our axles to just hang freely. You can do this with the tires and wheels on, but we're going to be taking them off just to make it a little easier for video purposes. We do want to have enough room to drop down the axle and have room to put the spacer in between the frame and the axle block. So we just need to keep that in mind when we're getting this up in the air. And one more thing we're going to take a look at is our wires or hydraulic lines going to our brake system. So if you've got electric brakes, which in this case we've got the drum brakes here, we want to make sure those wires are going to be long enough to accommodate for any travel that we're going to have after the fact of putting our spacers in. If you need to extend those, just grab some butt connectors, strip back those ends, and extend them. Lucky for us, uh, we will not have to do that today. We've got more than enough underneath the trailer to work with. Now I've already got the rear axle completely done, so I'm just going to be doing our front axle here on camera for us today. But both axles will be done the exact same way. And we're going to start by having a jack on one end. Uh, this is just going to be our support as we drop that far end completely loose when we go to put our spacer in. But we're going to start at the end that doesn't have the jack support on it, and all we're going to be doing is just taking the hardware loose. Now we're going to take a 15-16 socket on the nut on the inside and then same for the wrench on the outside and just loosen up our hardware. We want to go to where just uh, the end of the nut is at the end of our bolt. So I'm going to back it out and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Got it back just to the end of that bolt to where you can see it is loose but we don't have any of the threads protruding past or sunk down into it and set into it. So we're gonna do that with this bolt and then same on the one here at the rear. So we'll lo loosen up just these two on this side. From the driver side, we've got all that hardware loose but left it in place. We're going to come over to the passenger side. You do want to make sure your jack is underneath this end because we're going to be removing the hardware opposed to just taking it loose. So go ahead and use that 5 16ths. Get everything loose and removed as far as hardware on this side. 
You do want to, while the axle is pushed up into place, have your jack come up right underneath it, and then we're gonna use that jack to slowly lower it down in order to get the spacer where it needs to be. Now you may find that the axle does not drop down at all. Uh, part of that is going to be because it is wedged up in between our brackets that are on the frame. And so we do need to either beat that loose, uh, just banging on the plate that's going to be back behind the wheel end, or we can take a pry bar and there's going to be a spot right between the axle and our bracket that it's going to allow us to pry downwards, slowly working that away from the frame. And that little slot's gonna be right up here underneath. So if we can, we'll just pry away at that, see if it does move at all. Normally you do have to beat this panel back uh, just to get all the debris and corrosion that's in between that and the axle housing loose. And if we need to, we can beat right up against the axle tube itself to try to get it to start to come down. Got my pry bar wedged in that gap I was talking about. Now I'm gonna to start to drop down our jack here under that side of the axle. So that way we can work that space. And you may find that it just leaves you a little gap and we'll just use that little gap a little bit at a time, continuing to work this loose. And it's just gonna be a slow process of getting it down on this side first. Uh, the other side, once you've got this loose, is substantially easier. So it's just unwedging it from where it's stuck in the frame. With all that out of the way we've got our axle drop down beyond the bracket that's really where we need to be with that and so we can take our spacer we're gonna make sure the slotted holes are on the bottom and then we're gonna have just the regular holes on the outside going away from the center of the axle so we'll slide that in between and if we need to we can drop down the axle just a hair more here for us and just start to get all those holes aligned. So we'll peek through. And since we're gonna be putting some pressure back up against it, we wanna make sure we're up against the frame as much as possible and lined up with the holes on the bottom. Raise this back into place, just making contact with our frame up top and that axle on the bottom. That'll help kind of level us out again. Just pay attention to where those holes are coming through. So that way we can get that hardware in place. And we'll get some good pressure on that. We're gonna take a bolt and if we can feed that through our side holes. Looks like I can get the one in the back here. So we're gonna go in from the inside of the frame and then take a washer that's gonna go on the outside of the frame and then the nuts are lock nuts and they're gonna have small serrations here on the side showing which end is the lock side. So we wanna put that on the bolt on the opposite side where it doesn't have the serrations and you won't be able to thread it onto that serrated side to help get all that lined up. Any of the ones that we have the ability to drop the hardware into place, we're just gonna take the remaining hardware, that washer and nut, and we'll just get those started so that way we at least keep our alignment for the ones that will work without any adjustment. Again, you may find that on the frontmost hole, you will have to take that file and just kind of take back a little bit of the material in order to get the front bolt in place. Once all of our hardware is in place and we've got it tightened down by hand, we'll come back with our 15 16 on all of them 
and just get them to where they're flush up against the end of the bolt, just like we did on the other side when we were taking it loose, but we're just gonna leave all this loose over here for now, hop back over to that driver side and pull all the hardware out of that and get everything in place exactly like we did here on the passenger side. We're gonna keep that jack in place, put some good pressure up against the frame, and instead of just bottoming out, we're gonna go all the way up against the frame with all of our hardware on this driver side here. Then we're gonna to have to hop back over to the passenger side and do the same thing with our pressure from the jack. So for now, just tighten up all the hardware here on that driver side. Just go into where it's going to be bottomed out against the frame and not too tight. Now we are going to come back through with a torque wrench and torque that to the specification shown in the instruction manual. Make sure you read that very clearly because there are different sizes of axles and they're going to indicate that with our lug nuts here. So make sure you're reading that properly. Just go back through. I don't really see once you've got all of them tightened down any specific torque order. So just make sure you hit all pieces of hardware on each end. So four bolts and nuts need to be tightened. We'll do one side and then hop over to the other and do the same. Now that we've got everything torqued to spec, we'll just go back through, get our wheels and lug nuts all in place, put those nuts on there and torque those to that specification, depending on which end you have. Uh, Dexter does include a link in the instructions to be able to look up what the torque spec for your wheel end should be as well. Uh, so that's another benefit of using this kit. And that was our look at an installation of the Dexter Tor Flex Lift Kit for number nine through 12 trailers. My name is Ian with eTrailer and I appreciate you watching.